Yeah. Hmm. There you go. Dog, you forgot something, man. What are you doing? Three hours pass. Um, I'm still getting paid for this. Here we go. Hey, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ronald. In this video, I'm gonna be discussing Git, a tool used by software engineers. If you're new to this channel, I'll talk about coding, entrepreneurship, and my life in general as a software engineer. I also give tips and tricks on how to be a software engineer. If this is something you might be interested in, hey, subscribe to the fam. So, no further ado, let's get into it. Ah, you thought I forgot. All right, let's talk about what is Git. Git is a version control. Now, well, what is a version control? A version control is a piece of software that keeps track of the history of the software code. This piece of software allows software teams to work faster and at scale. So pretty much allows a lot of collaboration and allows you to develop products way faster when using this software, especially if you're remotely, whatever. Just imagine a piece of paper that multiple developers need to edit on this piece of paper. Before version control, before Git, developers had to pass around like files and piece of paper to make redactions to this piece of paper. And pretty much it was just a very slow way of developing code. It got tired really quick. With Git today, it makes it where this single piece of paper is allowed for multiple developers to edit on this piece of paper. This leads to better ways to collaborate with other software development teams and also speeds up the development of the software products. In this video, I'm gonna show you some fundamental Git commands you'll probably use on a daily basis or when you first start out building software applications with a team. There are assortment of Git commands out there and I'm not gonna go over every single one because it's so extensive, but I am gonna go over the main ones today. But if you wanna you know, check out the other you know, documentations, other commands, I'll put a link in the description to check out the documentation for Git. So I'm gonna preface by saying I'm not gonna be, you know, installing Git because I already got Git on there. I'm also gonna have like a link below where you can install Git. However, if you wanna follow along, you will need Git, a GitHub account, and also a terminal or a command prompt of your choice. Most likely one that's provided by your operating system. And that's pretty much it. All right, let's get started with a storyline. So you are told to get a machine up and running for this existing project to fix this bug. The source code is on the company's private GitHub account. The DevOps engineer sets up your account and you receive your credentials. The first thing you have to do is get this source code on your local machine, aka laptop. All right, so there's two things you have to remember and there's two different types of repos. There's a local repo and a remote repo. I'm gonna go back and forth using these terms during this video. So just know when I'm talking about local, I'm talking about your laptop, your personal physical machine that you can touch. And when I'm talking about remote, I'm talking about a server far away that holds your source code files that you, can, you can't touch. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is try to get the source code from the remote repository so we can put it on our local. So first thing we're gonna do is go to GitHub, which is the remote repository, and clone that resource and put it on our local. So on a remote, you have to copy this, this link right here. We're gonna do a git clone and paste that link we got from the remote repository. All right, so this is gonna download the source code in this directory that I wanted in, and it's gonna create a whole new folder, and we're just gonna go from there. All right, so it did it. Now we can go check that out. So as you can see, that is what it downloaded. It's right here. And we got the source file here. So I'm gonna open it up in my notepad here. So I'm gonna use notepad for the editor. You can use whatever notepad editor you wanna to use to edit this. So we did a git clone and everything. And typically when you do a first git clone, it's gonna give you a prompt to do like a credentials and yeah, I don't feel like taking off the credentials off of my computer, but typically it gives you a prompt that goes through this whole thing, putting your username and your password for the user, for the GitHub account. And yeah, you just go from there. All right, so now we got it on our local. 
Now we're gonna see what kind of branches that we have. We should only have one branch because when you clone a repository, it should just give you the default branch. And typically that's the, the reason behind that because it could be like a thousands or hundreds of branches on a remote repository. You don't wanna download every single one. In order to see the branches on your local, you have to do this command, git branch. But first we got a CD, we have to go into the directory, test, and we do a git branch. All right, so we only have one on there. And if we go back to the remote repository, we see we have three here. We have this develop one and we have this SJ123 but fix empty file branch. So the first one we're gonna check out is develop. And in order to do that, we do a git checkout dash dash track origin forward slash develop. And then we press enter. All right, so now it says switch to new branch develop, branch develop set up to track remote branch develop from origin. So typically it will follow this for format every single time you wanna check out a branch from a remote repository. The dash dash track is a flag option and is mainly used to keep track of changes in the remote version of that, remote, um, of that branch on the local. The next part of this is to find the bug branch that you wanna check out from the remote repository. Sometimes you might already know the remote branch slash name or tag or you want to find a feature bug or hotfix branch that to work on. If you want like a list of all the branches, you can use this command. So just like the one that we used earlier, but a slight variation, git branch dash r. So the dash r, I'm going to explain that later. And as you can see, now we see all the remote branches on the remote repository. The dash R flag is used to specify to look for remote branches. Just like with the git branch without the dash R, that is specifically for your local. All right, so now we found the bug branch. Now it's time to check it out. All right, so in order to check it out, we're gonna do the same thing that we kind of did with develop, but a little slight variation. Uh, so we're gonna do git checkout, dash s track and then we're going to copy this so a cool little trick i use control insert and then i do a shift insert and that's how i copy from the command line and you press enter all right so now we switch to the bug and we can check that out right now by doing a git branch and now we're currently on the bug branch in our editor of choice, we're gonna make changes to the code to fix the bug. Now it's time for everyone on the team to get those changes. You can do the git status command to show the files that you wanna stage. So, all right, let's do that first. So git status. All right, so we didn't, as you can see, there's no changes currently on there, so it's nothing to commit. So we're gonna to go to our editor we're gonna commit some change. We're gonna make some changes to commit. So fix empty file. And we're gonna push save. And now we go to the get status. Do the get status command again. Now we see that this is the file that we modify and is ready for staging. So these are the stages that that haven't been staged yet and are ready to be committed. So now we're gonna go into the next part of this and now we need to add that file to the directory. So there's two ways you can do that. You can do the git add in the file directory uh, specifically. So since we're in the directory of the file, we just copy the readme.md, do something like this, git add read readme.md. We can do that or we can do git add dot so one is more specific, the other one is just a rule all. If you wanna just add all the changes that you did on your repository or what you did, then you can do that. We're just gonna be more specific and we're just gonna do the readme.md. 
All right, so when we do a get status again, you see that now changes are ready to be committed. Now we're gonna commit it and put it in the staging area. So staging area is just, just before you push something, you just put it where, you know, the repository will know what, what changes need to be pushed to the remote. All right, so now we're gonna do the git commit. So git commit dash m, and in between our quotations, we're gonna add a message to keep track of the history of these changes that we just did. Fix. Fix. And we're gonna press enter. Now we have one file change and one inserted for staging. So here we go. Now we're gonna check out the get status and now you should have nothing in your working tree, which is your current like, working repository saying that there's no changes on there. So there's a working tree, there's a staging area, and there's a push to remote. So working tree is on your local and typically no one has that other than you. And that's pretty much it. All right. So the last thing we're gonna do is a git push. And since we did that whole track, like dash dash track thing, that makes it where you don't have to do this whole um, dash u origin push kind of like command. You just do a git push and it knows exactly what remote branch that you're tracking to push to and it's gonna automatically push to that branch. All right, so now we're gonna do a refresh on our remote repository. So we're currently on the main branch. We need to switch to the bug fix branch because that's where the changes are. And as you can see, there, there's the change. You get like a, a notification at the top. You have some recent pushes changed. Do you want to merge it to a particular branch? And more likely you will merge this to develop, not main, because usually main is used for release and final cuts of release versions of software. So you typically never merge to main ever. Now we're gonna go and click this button to create a pull request. All right, so this is the message that we did for the commit. You know, you can add little comments here to say what changes that you actually did. And then go from there, you do a create pull request. Uh, so finally you merged your changes to the main branch. And now your team received your bug fix and they're super happy. So I actually made a mistake in this video where I merged it to the main branch instead of develop. Typically, if something like that happens, you can revert those changes. And as typically done in Git, there's other commands I actually plan on doing in a series, such as you know reverting changes to a previous commit. Also, what's the difference between fetch and pull? and what's the difference between merge and rebase, etc. You know, look out for those videos when they come out. So if you enjoyed this content, you know, give this video a like and also, you know, comment down below if you're looking forward for more in this series as far as Git and how to use Git and some other tools that software engineers use on a daily basis. And, you know, get this uh, channel and subscribe if you enjoy this content and if you want to see more. So until next time, Peace.